What would you do if a loved one came back from the dead? But they weren't quite themselves anymore. Something was wrong. That is what today's story is all about. This story is called, My Brother Died, But Then He Came Back and Everything Was Wrong. I wish I was still oblivious to the truth. Go back and live in ignorance. I didn't know all this stuff was real. Witchcraft, necromancy, magic. Why would anyone think that was real? I guess I should start from the beginning. With the people who brought this hell upon me. My parents. A few years before I was born, my father had a different family. He was married previously, before my mother. He used to tell me how wonderful his first wife was and how happy she made him. But all she ever wanted was a child, and they were struggling to conceive. After years of trying, one day his wife came home with a sapling of a juniper tree. She began to tell him about a woman who sold her an old Italian strega spell to help her. He never believed in such things, as most people don't. But he didn't protest. If it made her happy to try hooey magic, it wasn't hurting anyone. So he smiled and told her to do what she thinks is best. He never knew all the details of what the spell entailed. All he remembered was her planting the sapling in their backyard, and she would go out and prick her finger at it monthly, letting a drop of blood land in the soil under it. As she cared for the tree and helped it grow, one day it grew mature enough to bear fruit, which apparently she had to eat. My father always said he believed it was because the tree brought her happiness and she was finally not stressed constantly, and that's why they were able to finally become pregnant. She told him she had to eat the berries every day through the pregnancy as she was instructed by this old woman who sold her the spell. My father didn't really think much of it, he just agreed. Eventually the day came when my brother was born. This was both the happiest and saddest day of my father's life, he told me. Something went wrong during childbirth, and she died. On her deathbed, she begged my father to bury her with the tree. He told me she was rambling about it being very important. Normally, he wouldn't have listened to a drug-induced rambling like that, but it was her dying wish. Since it's technically not legal to just bury someone in your backyard, my father did what he could. Before she was cremated, he had locks of her hair and pieces of her nails trimmed off so he could bury them under the tree. He also spread her ashes along the base of the tree as well. Now he found himself to be a single father to a boy. A boy who needed a mother. It just so happened, however, in the hospital he met a nurse. My mother. She was there for him through the grieving process as a friend, but soon they started developing romantic feelings and eventually got married. I was born shortly after that. My father loved both his children very much, but my mother felt like he showed more love to my brother than me. Looking back on it, I don't think he was ever favoring him over me, but my mother got in my head about it. Any time he would ask my brother to join him to do something, my mother would point it out to me. She would say things like, See? He prefers his first child. He still loves his first wife, and he still hasn't gotten over her for us. I don't know why, but I started to believe her. I guess it was just between me being young and impressionable, and her constant barrage reminding me that I was less important than my brother. I think I became conditioned into believing whatever thing my mother spewed out at me at the time. My mother would be hostile to my brother. She often would give him trouble and pick on him when my father wasn't around. Some days would be worse than others, but the worst day of the year was always on his birthday. That was the day my father would spend hours talking to my brother about his birth mother. My father would look so happy when he spoke of his memories, and that made my mother very sad at first. Then the sadness would turn to anger. That carried on all through my life, until the day it happened. The worst day of my life. The biggest mistake I ever made. It was my brother's 18th birthday when it happened. 
My father surprised him with the news that he was going to pay for his college, his apartment, and he bought him a new car. I don't know what my parents' finances actually looked like. Looking back, I shouldn't have listened to my mother. I should have talked to my father. But my mother was quite good at manipulating me at this point. After the party, my mother pulled me aside and told me that there would be no money left for me after this. She convinced me that my father only cared about his son getting a good start in life. I got so mad when she told me this, but I was mad at my father and my brother. My mother then told me she had a plan. She was going to make sure that I had a future too. I agreed to help her without knowing the details. That was a mistake. The next day, my father was at work, and my mother was helping my brother pack his things for college. She called me over and told me to put the large totes out back by the tree. She looked me in the eyes and told me, This is very important. I need you to stack all those totes on top of one another. She winked at me and I did as she asked. When lunchtime came around, my mother made us all lunch and called me and my brother downstairs. It's such a nice day out today. Let's eat outside, my mother exclaimed. She was looking so happy and not being so mean to my brother for once, so we agreed. My brother was enjoying this day, feeling like he had a mother who cared about him. These kind of days were rare, so we both would usually tend to just do whatever my mother wanted to keep her in a good mood. We sat outside and had a nice lunch, talking about the future, and just all around, it was so far a really good day. My mother wandered over to the tree as she inspected the totes. She called my brother over, and they looked like they were inspecting the boxes. My mother looked up at the tree and pointed to it as she reminded my brother of his mother who was buried under it. She told him he should kneel down at the tree and tell her goodbye. Tell her about how he's going off to college, and so that's what he did. My mother called me over quickly, and she pulled my arm to move me behind the boxes. She made a motion with her hands, telling me to push the totes down onto my brother. I didn't realize this was her plan. I just opened my mouth in shock and shook my head and whispered quietly. No, I won't. My mother scowled at me and whispered back. You will do as I say. She grabbed me by the arms and slammed me into the totes, causing them all to follow my brother. There, was that so hard? She smirked as she spoke to me. Now go check to see if he's dead. I just stood there in total shock. My face lost all its color as I couldn't believe what just happened. My mother walked back into the house, swaying back and forth, and she looked quite happy with herself. Everything was moving in like a slow motion. I had no idea that this was the plan. I didn't want to kill anybody. My heart was pounding out of my chest as I began to hyperventilate. Then I thought, well, well, maybe he isn't dead. I, I, I could still call for help. I began to pull the totes off of him and reach down to try to feel for a pulse. I didn't know what I was doing, but... I saw blood pooling all over the ground around his head. I began to cry and I ran into the house looking for my phone. Suddenly my mother appeared holding both my phone and my brother's phone in her hand. Looking for these? She smiled as she spoke. She sounded like a maniac. I know she had problems, but not until now did I ever realize just how twisted her mind was. Everything came rushing at me like a light switch. All my memories came flooding, all the time she convinced me I wasn't good enough and that my father didn't love me as much. It was like watching her be so happy about killing another human being just gave me a sudden moment of clarity. You're a monster! I screamed at her. Give me my phone, we might still be able to save him. I lunged at my mother and tried to grab my phone. She shoved me to the ground and scowled at me. You're lucky to have me for a mother, she grunted back. You clearly don't have it in you to take care of yourself, to do whatever it takes to get ahead in life. I began to cry and I looked up at her. Why are you doing this? I didn't want this. I would rather be poor than kill somebody. Now give me my phone. She towered over me. Her face seemed contorted in an unhuman way. You have no idea the things I have done to make sure we both had a good life. You're weak. I clearly have more work to do before letting you out into the world on your own. She scowled at me as she spoke. I jumped up and tried to tackle her. She was stronger than I realized. I wasn't making a dent in trying to fight back. So weak, tisk tisk. She shook her head back and forth. She chuckled, then <laughs> threw my phone down. Fine. 
Call the cops. But I'll just tell them the truth. You push those boxes onto your brother. You're jealous of him. Always have been. And I saw it all. I grabbed the phone and I looked up at her. She was always good at getting into my head. I sat there for a moment in shock. I asked her, Would you really rather see me in jail? She bent down, her eyes meeting mine as she spoke. Yes. Look how weak you are. I can have another child, or maybe I'll just keep the money all to myself. Go ahead, call them. It's your fingerprints all over all those totes. I haven't touched them at all today. I also saw you pulling them off of them. She pointed down at my knee. You even have his blood on you. I looked down at my clothes and I realized I did kneel in his blood. All my thoughts were rushing through my head at the moment. I imagined myself being arrested and rotting in jail. I started to bawl my eyes out at the thought. I looked up at her and I mumbled, Fine, I won't call. But I won't have any further part in this. She grunted at my response and grabbed my arm to pull me up. Oh no, you will. And I need you to deal with the body and you'll help me clean up or I'll call the police on you. She pushed me to the door. Come on, we need to put him in his car and load up his things in there with him. I was a puppet, lost in grief and shock. I began to just move, not even wanting to. I just seemed like my body took over on autopilot. I was crying the whole time. My mother would shove me every once in a while when the crying got too much for her. She was very careful not to touch anything and made me pack up his car until it came time to move his body. She had me pull his car up to the back gate and we dragged his body to the car. I then noticed that she was wearing gloves for this. She really was going to set me up, I thought to myself. She handed me my phone and told me to follow the route that she put in there and she'd follow behind in her car. I got in the car and did as she ordered. I kept looking at my brother's dead body sitting in the passenger seat. I'm so sorry, I cried out. I don't want to do this. She's making me do this. Not like you can hear me anyway. I trailed off and began to cry. As I pulled up to the destination, I realized my mother's plan. The car made it over its last hill. The sun was beginning to set. The red and pink rays falling down onto the bridge in front of us. It was clear she was going to have me help her drive his car off the bridge. I pulled off to the side of the road and looked through the rearview mirror as she pulled up behind me. She got out of the car and instructed me what to do next. The main tote that hit his head. She had me stack it up behind him in the driver's seat as we moved him into it. This bridge had dirt paths to the side for walking trails. We were going to be driving his car into the water from the top of one of the paths. We emptied a tote of some of his things all over to make it look like everything fell out. She had me start the car, and she started throwing heavy items to the window and piled them around his feet until his dead foot pressed onto the pedal hard enough to start driving over the edge. I watched his car crashed off into the edge of the river under the bridge. My mother then threw his phone into the water and told me to get in her car and go home. When we got home, my mother began to clean up the backyard. She pointed to the tree. There was a pile of blood laying there. Go grab a shovel and dig up the dirt and bury the blood. She barked orders at me as she went inside. I grabbed a shovel from the shed and did as she said. As I finished burying it, the final tear fell on the fresh dirt I packed on top of the area. Suddenly I saw the tree go up in flames, but it wasn't on fire. The fire just burned just on the outside of the bark like the tree was being encased with fire. Suddenly I heard a caw as a big black raven flew out from the flames of the branches. I just saw it for a moment, but I swear its eyes were burning red. Maybe it was just a reflection. But what's happening? I'm trying to rationalize a bird with fire red eyes when this tree is literally up in flames in front of me. I reached out my hand, just completely confused as to what I was looking at. As I went to try to touch the flame, the bird flew off and the flames just vanished. 
And just as the flames vanished, my father returned home from work. My mother had set out dinner and was acting completely normal. None of what happened fazed her one bit. My father asked where my brother went and I couldn't help it. I started to cry. My mother raised an eyebrow at me, giving me a look before she told my father a lie that she concocted. Oh, he was so excited. He left a day early for college. He said he would call later when he gets settled in. My father looked over at me crying and gave me a reassuring hug. It's all right, sweetheart. You'll see him on holiday breaks. You'll get used to him coming and going soon enough. He kissed me on the forehead, which just made me cry more. But still, my father said, would have liked to see him off. He nibbled at his food a bit, looking a bit upset when suddenly my mother spoke up. Why don't you head over to the campus tomorrow and visit him? Make sure he's all settled in, dear. My father smiled at her idea and nodded, his head agreeing that he would do just that. My mother looked over at me with a look in her eyes as she spoke. It gives us girls a bit of time to get together and have girl talk. I can help her calm down and get her head on straight again. There was something sinister in her voice as she spoke. Seems I was the only one who noticed, though. In the morning, my father packed up a bag and headed out to visit my brother. I watched as my mother waved goodbye to him and he drove off. She turned back around and came inside to find me. There, now you have a day to get over yourself and not blow this for both of us. Cry your little heart out and by the end of tomorrow this stops. You need to toughen up and get over yourself. I went up to my room and just laid in bed grieving for my brother. Worried my father would be the one to find his car and body on the drive there. We didn't take the freeway, so he may not be the one to discover him, I told myself. I hate that she also may have put my father down that path as well. Why is she so cruel? Why have I never noticed how evil my own mother was? Eventually I fell asleep, and when I woke up it was dark out. Great. Now I'm going to be up all night, I mumbled to myself as I got up and looked out the window at the tree. The memories of what happened flashed before me and I began to feel the panic and sadness again. I just don't understand how she's so calm and okay with what happened, I whispered to myself. Suddenly I heard a crash downstairs. I walked towards my door to open and go check, but I found myself frozen in place. My heart started beating heavily. I felt the panic starting up again. I'm scared of her. I'm too scared to go to my own mother now. Before I knew it, I grabbed a chair and used it to prop it up against my doorknob to lock myself in my room. I went and sat at my windowsill looking out at the tree again. Hopefully she doesn't call out to me, I whispered to myself. I need to find a way to get away from her. I'd heard her moving around downstairs as I sat quietly. I didn't want her to know I was awake. Suddenly I saw that raven again. She was pecking at the dirt under the tree. The spot that I dug up to hide the blood. The raven didn't seem to notice me, but I did finally see that, yes. Its eyes were red. Slightly glowing. My heart began to beat again. Something about it scared me. I wanted to understand what was going on. I quietly slid the chair away from my door and tiptoed downstairs. I looked over at the kitchen, saw some movement in there, and I quickly grabbed my jacket and keys and snuck out the front door quietly. I took a breath as I closed the door ever so softly, praying that she didn't hear me. I tiptoed down the steps and peeked around the side of the house looking for the bird. But then I saw it. My blood turned cold, felt my stomach drop, and pure and utter terror ran through me. I saw him. I saw my brother, but he wasn't my brother. He was dead. Definitely dead. He was walking around. His water-soaked skin was gray and looked like it was beginning to peel off leaving behind gaping holes of sludge of black flesh. His eyes were red like the bird's eyes, but looked so lifeless. What the hell is going on, I thought to myself. 
Then I saw what was in his hand. My mother. He was dragging her lifeless body. Her neck was crushed. Her head was bent completely to the side. It looked like it was just dangling there. Her skin on her neck was still intact, but like a piece of rubber holding her head and as it hung there. My brother dragged her from her arm with great ease over to the tree. He grabbed her head and yanked on it, letting loose the skin, and it just exploded blood everywhere on the tree. I slipped back around the corner, gagging and trying not to scream at the same time. I started searching my pockets for my keys when suddenly I saw a huge reflection of light hit the fence and heard the whooshing sound of a fire starting up. I peeked around the corner once more to see the tree lit up in fire again like it had been that one day. So I wasn't crazy. This actually did happen. I watched the trunk of the tree open up this time and my brother shoved my mother's body inside of it. The tree looked like it was eating her. My fingers finally felt the cool metal of the key ring in my pocket as I quietly ran to the car. I got inside, locked the doors, and started it up, quickly taking off from the house. I looked back in the rearview mirror and I saw him. He was running in the road. He saw me leave. This can't be my brother, I kept telling myself. I grabbed my phone and opened the map to go back to the bridge. I have to check his car. I have to see if he's still in there. I sped off to the bridge, trying to get some answers. It was faster than last time. I was probably speeding and not realizing it. Surprised I didn't get pulled over. I slowly pulled up to the side of the road again. I looked around the car for any sort of weapons. All I found was a little knife we had in a glove box for emergencies. I grabbed it. Better than nothing, I thought. I made my way down to where the car crashed into the river. I saw one of his totes floating around, some clothes, random things. I pulled up my phone and turned on the flashlight, trying to look into the dark water. And there I saw the car. From the shore, I saw my light, trying to look in to see if his body was still in there. It was a bit too far away. I carefully began to balance myself on some big rocks that were in the water, shining the light down further into the car. I could finally see the driver's seat. And there it was. Nothing. His body was gone. I felt my stomach drop again. What the hell is going on? I asked out loud. I felt a panic attack coming in again, and I was trying to get off this rock before I fell in, when suddenly I heard the cawing of the raven. It flew right at me, and I slipped and fell into the water, dropping my phone. I watched as the light from my phone illuminated what looked like my brother swimming up from the bottom of the lake. I screamed and began to panic, trying to pull myself out of the water, my foot slipping between two rocks and getting stuck. I kept pulling and pulling as I watched him slowly get closer to me. His rotten form sent a shock of adrenaline through me as his features became clear. He looked horrible. He was a, he was a monster. Finally, my foot slipped out of my shoe, which was still embedded between the two rocks, but I didn't care. I just started to run. I ran back to the car and got inside. I locked the doors as I began to speed away. What am I going to do? I need a plan. I started rambling to myself. There has to be some way to stop this thing from chasing me. I thought about going back home and trying to destroy the tree. But it can't be burned, and I don't know how to chop a tree down, I mumbled to myself. So I tried to run through the options of what to do. This is some magic thing, right? The tree, my father said, his wife brought it from a witch or something? I was about to call out to my phone to Google breaking curses, but then I realized, right, my phone's in the water. This is a small city we're in. I don't know of any witches that live here. Screw it, I said as I spun the car around. I decided to try the local church. The church must have some kind of protection, right? If witches are real, then the church and all that crap is real too, right? It must be. I was talking to myself like I was a mad woman, trying to logic some kind of reason and solution out of the situation. I drove straight up to the church doors and I ran for my car to get inside, but they were locked. Of course, it's after dark. In this city, nothing's open late. I decided to try and see if anyone was there. I began pounding on the door and screaming for help. I kept looking behind me, watching for the bird or my brother to come walking up at any moment. I was hysterical at this point. I started screaming, Help! Let me in, please! 
and I was crying and pounding my fist on the door when suddenly I heard a latch move. Someone was there unlocking the doors. Oh, thank God, I called out. I need asylum or something. There, there's something evil out here. I need help. I began to ramble, but no one opened the door. I paused for a moment, thinking something felt off. And I slowly reached down for the handle of the door. I pressed on the handle. It was unlocked now. I slowly opened the door and peeked my head inside. Suddenly, the raven came barreling at me and started to peck at my face. I screamed and ran back to the car, driving off. There's only one other place I think I can go now, I started rambling to myself. I began to drive into the heart of the city, towards the police station. I wasn't too far away, maybe a couple blocks. I started to speed up, trying to get there quickly. I glanced into my back mirror and then I saw him. He was sitting in the back seat. When he realized that I saw him, he began to grin at me. His arms beginning to move out towards me. I panicked, slammed on the brakes and grabbed the knife and stuck it in one of his arms. I didn't hear him react though. No sound, nothing. I quickly jumped out of the car and I began running the rest of the way. I began screaming at my brother. Stop! I'm, I'm gonna turn myself in, I swear. I'm gonna go tell the truth. Please, let me set things right. I was just screaming it into the empty streets as I ran. I didn't see him following me. But that didn't mean that he wouldn't just pop right out of a dark corner and grab me. My heart was racing as my eyes darted back and forth, running as fast as I could, with only one shoe. Eventually, I did make it to the station. I began to bang on the glass, screaming to the overnight clerk. I need to confess. Let me in. It's trying to kill me. I need to confess. I killed him. I need to confess. I probably look like a crazy person to this clerk. She radioed in for other officers to come to the front. She looked a bit frightened at me. They all came barreling out front and opened the door. Hands up, hands up. Do you have any weapons on you? I lifted my hands up as they told me to do. No, no, I don't have anything. I said back to them. They slowly moved towards me, their tasers drawn, and began to pat me down. They looked suspicious at me, but placed me in cuffs and pulled me inside. They placed me in an interrogation room flicked on the cameras and told me my rights. I waved the right to a lawyer, I quickly said. I have to confess now before this thing kills me. I began to ramble and I told them the whole story. As I spoke, I felt a weight being taken off me. I felt like this must be what I was supposed to do to get my brother to stop chasing me. I think I was doing the right thing. After I was done talking, the officers went to go get me some water. They handed me a pen and a pad of paper and told me to write it all out, which is what I'm doing here right now. And as you read this paper, you'll notice a big line follows past the last letter. Like something distracted the writer. And then one more line is written. The bird. It, it's here. And that is the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time.